Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Saturday. Uh, today is the last day of our Passion Week daily devotional series. I hope you were able to join us yesterday uh, for a Good Friday evening service as well. If you haven't had a chance to join us live yesterday night, uh, there's a recorded version still up. Uh, so please take the worship, uh, please take the video, watch it, and worship with us uh, whenever you are able to. I also want to thank everyone for joining us not only today, uh, but every way, every day this week as we're able to share in the Word of God and also be able to pray for one another. And hopefully, we'll be able to continue to do something like this uh, in the future as well. Uh, today, we'll be looking at uh, Matthew chapter 27, and it's Jesus in the tomb. Uh, we see in the first verse today, it says, As evening approached, uh, there came a rich man uh, from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Uh, it's very important for us to know uh, who this man was. In today's passage, it simply says that he was a rich man, uh, but he was also a respected member of the council, the religious uh, ruling body of the Jews. Uh, some people call it the Sanhedrin, right? Uh, it was actually the group of people who had Jesus captured and Jesus sent to Pilate and had Jesus killed. Uh, Joseph was a member of this group. And perhaps that's why in the Gospel of John, they tell us uh, that he was a secret disciple that he kept his discipleship secret out of fear uh, for the other members of his council. But what we see today is that after the death of Jesus, uh, after the veil had been torn, uh, Joseph was willing to out himself as a disciple of Jesus. He was willing to no longer hide, uh, but to show others that he was a follower and he is a follower of Jesus. And even though he was a member of the Sanhedrin, who was victorious in the killing Jesus, uh, Joseph refused to stand idle. Joseph refused to hide. Instead, he did something, the only thing that he thought he could do for Christ at this moment. Uh, Jesus had died, right? Uh, but Joseph wanted to do something for him. So with what he had, and because of his uh, station in life, he was able to ask Pilate for Jesus' body. So he was able to take Jesus' dead body, uh, put a linen cloth over it, and even prepared uh, a proper tomb for Jesus, his teacher, his master, who had just died. And what we see from today's passage, and often something that we feel in our everyday lives as well, is that serving Jesus is not always easy. Uh, sometimes it does come at a cost. Uh, sometimes we're called to do things that we're not really comfortable with. Uh, sometimes it could be a small or minor inconvenience, or something that could be a huge or large sacrifice. But serving Jesus uh, is not always uh, very easy for every one of us. I remember I was speaking to a member of our church, a young adult member actually, and he told me the story about uh, how he went on missions all the time. Uh, for many, many years, every time he had vacation time, twice a year, uh, he would use that time to go on our short-term missions trips. And every time before these seasons, right, where everyone would go off, uh, he would have conversations with his coworkers, and they would always ask each other, hey, where are you going this year, right? Where are you going uh, for your break? Where are you going for your vacation? Are you going to somewhere good? And they would answer, hey, I'm going to the Bahamas. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to you know, Canada, wherever it is, wherever people go on vacation. Uh, but when they would ask him, he would give very strange answers. He would say, um, I'm going to Jordan. Um, I'm going to Turkey. Um, I'm going to Nicaragua. I'm going to Haiti. You know, places where people don't really want to go. And people would look at him strangely and ask, you know, why? Why are you going to these areas that nobody wants to go? And even though he was embarrassed and he was kind of on the side and the outside in the beginning, uh, every season he would share these things with his coworkers. After a few years of this, now his coworkers, their mindset totally changed. Uh, instead of going up to him asking, hey, where are you going for your break? They should just ask him, hey, where are you going for missions this year? Uh, where are you going? What are you doing for missions this year? Tell me what you have done and what you're going to do uh, this year as you go on to these missions trips. And even some people were willing to help him out and support him in different ways uh, because he was able to share all this. And through this, not only was he able to share what he did on the missions trips, he was able to actually share the gospel of Jesus Christ with his coworkers in a very natural and relaxed way. 
You know, today's passage, uh, the story of Joseph of Arimathea, it actually reminds us and actually calls us that it doesn't matter who you are, that we are called to serve God. It doesn't matter if it's easy or if it's really hard, that we always are given an opportunity and a chance to serve Jesus and serve his kingdom. And it doesn't matter if we were some uh, secret disciple who kept our identity a secret, right? Or someone that's, you know, tells the world that we were Christians all the time. It doesn't matter who we are, we are always able to serve God with what we have and where we are in this very moment, the same way that Joseph was able to serve Jesus. And I'm reminded of a story in the New Testament where Jesus is talking about uh, giving offerings to God, right? And he points out this widow, this poor widow, this poor widow who gives her final two copper coins to church or to the temple as an offering. And we're actually told that these two copper coins, they add up to one penny. Uh, But Jesus looks at her and says, she has given most for the kingdom of God. She has served faithfully. You know, we are called to serve. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are in this very moment. Uh, Whether you have a fabulous job or just something part-time, whether you're a student, young or old, whether you have a family or you're married or somewhere in between, it does not matter where you are or who you are. God is calling us to serve him being able to use whatever he has given us to obey and serve, whether it's easy or hard to be able to serve him. You know, as Easter is coming close, we actually have one day before Easter. Uh, I want to remind everyone, I want to also encourage everyone to take this time to remember of everything that God has given you. I know we're in this pandemic uh, situation right now and everything is a little bit trying and dire, but nevertheless, I guarantee you, if you think about it, not even that hard, right? That you know that God has given us so much that even in this pandemic, each day, we are living by His grace. And I want you to think, how can I use what God has given me? How can I use the talents that God has provided for me? How can I use the position that God has placed me, or this location where God has put me uh, to be able to serve Him and to be able to further His kingdom wherever I am. And that is one of the messages that we see on this Saturday before Easter. As we continue in today's passage, uh, the latter part of it, we actually see the chief priests and the Pharisees, they go up to Pilate, right? They have this request. Uh, They got Jesus killed, but they want even more now. They were smart. As enemies of Jesus, they were actually really smart because they knew Jesus' teaching and they knew that Jesus had said that he would rise again on the third day. And they knew that even in death, that Jesus was dangerous. Uh, We read in verse 63, it says, Sir, they said, remember that while he was still alive, the deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples might come and steal the body and tell the people that he had been raised from the dead. The last deception will be worse than the first. Now, not only do they have this large you know, rock, this stone that's on the tomb, uh, they have guards now, and they actually put a seal on it as well. They did everything in their power to contain Jesus, to potentially stop Jesus, to stop his plans, to stop his disciples, and to stop his followers. They did everything that they can. That's how much they feared him. They did everything in their power and their station to be able to stop Jesus uh, from doing what he said he was going to do. But we know that this is not the end of the story. The end of the story is not the Pharisees put a seal on the tomb and it was over and nothing happened. That's not the end of today's story. It's showing us that the world can make every plan to go against Jesus. They could make laws. They could gather people to fight Jesus. They could even kill people and his followers, right? They could kill Jesus and his followers. They could do everything. They could guard his tomb. They could do all humanly possible things to try to stop the plan of Jesus, try to stop Jesus from fulfilling God's plan and the will of God. But what can go against the will of God? What can go against God's will? You know, Easter may be tomorrow, but this was true even before Easter, that nothing can stop what God declares to be true. 
that there's nothing in this world, especially the efforts of people, that could stop what God is going to do. The Easter's message is not only that He is risen, but it's also a declaration to the world that nothing can stop and nothing will stop the will of God. Nothing will stop or even hinder His plan. That His plan from the us, uh, for us from the beginning of creation until this very moment will continue to happen. And there's no one, nothing in this world that will ever stop that. That no one can stop Jesus Christ, that no one can stop the gospel from being shared, and no one will stop the salvation that we have already received. So my final prayer for everyone this Easter season, as everyone, uh, I pray that you're able to hold on to this faith, have assurance of your salvation, have confidence knowing that there's nothing in this world that can stop Jesus Christ. Have faith in the resurrection. Have your hope placed in the person of Jesus and his resurrection. And let us join together today and each every day afterwards in declaring this truth and declaring Jesus' victory over this world. Join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much uh, for giving us your word today and also being with us every day this week as we're able to share in your word during this Passion Week. Uh, Lord, uh, right now we are in a very trying time. It's a very difficult moment in this world. Uh, especially in this moment, Lord, we pray that everyone, that everyone, that all of us are able to hold on to your word. Hold on in faith to who you are and what you have done. And we're not allow the world and everything that the world is trying to do uh, to, to, to scare us or to take away our faith or to uh, shake our world in this moment. Pray, Lord, Father God, that even though when things get scary and things may be fearful and things may happen uh, that just terrible in our lives, we pray, Lord, Father God, that we are able to hold on to the hope that you have provided for us, uh, that in the season of Easter and every day afterwards, uh, that we remember who you are, remember what you have done, and we're able to join in your victory over this world. Help us with our lips and with our lives proclaim the victory uh, that you have shown us this season. Lord, we thank you and we love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank everyone for joining us this week. Uh, this final day as well, please do not leave. Uh, join us for this time of prayer. And I'll see you tomorrow in the afternoon uh, for our English ministry online worship.